Hey guys, GKCS here. In this lecture, we'll be talking on multi-threading for competitive programming. And uh, it's a very exciting topic. And uh, let's start with an example. So we have uh, as input around a million numbers. Um, and our job is to tell whether the number is a prime number or not. If it is, then we just say yes. If it's not, then no, too bad. So uh, the constraints for this problem are test cases uh, can be as large as 10 raised to the power 6 a million and the number which is being input called value can range from 1 to 10 raised to the power 6 again which is again a million so there's a very basic algorithm of uh, trying to find a factor between 1 to the square root of value 2 to the square root of value actually and uh, that algorithm takes square root of n uh, time which in this case will be somewhere around 10 is to the power 3 so for every test case overall 10 is to the power 3 to 10 is to the power 6 gives us 10 is to the power 9 10 seconds usually you know uh, most competitions don't have such a huge time limit and uh, essentially what will happen is our algorithm will time out If you use a better algorithm of uh, prime number C, then the complexity will be O n, as, as shown here, and uh, 10 is to the power 6 computations. So that's less than, I mean, uh, less than a hundredth of a second. So this should do it. O n, of course, if the algorithm is not optimized, then it can be uh, n log n. And in fact, this algorithm is not optimized for uh, number C, but that's fine. N log N will uh, still make the mark. So we are going to be uh, finding all the prime numbers between one to a million by using this number C algorithm. And uh, when we are done that time, we can solve for every value input and say whether it exists in this array of prime numbers. So if it does exist, yes. If it doesn't exist, no. But let's say that our algorithm is not efficient enough somehow. And, uh, you know, we have gone through the algorithm. There's no mistake there. There's nothing to debug. Uh, we have tried the optimization techniques discussed in lecture one, and it's still not making the mark. But we have this intuition that our algorithm is off by just a few, uh, just a very small margin. So in this case, what we can do is try and leverage multi-threading. Multi-threading, you know, initially most people consider it to be quite complicated and uh, difficult to implement. They aren't exactly wrong, but uh, if, you, if you have been doing this for uh, sometime then it's it's quite intuitive and quite easy actually so let's continue with this example and try and see how we can use multi-threading to get our job done better so this is our strategy we'll be having a main class which is essentially having the main method and uh, the whole brains behind the organization trying to figure out how do we um, get all the different results from different classes and make them work? So uh, this, this is something that we do all the time, uh, having a main class and a main method. Interestingly, we'll have a pre-processing unit. Now, this uh, situation is not compulsory for all problems, but quite a few of them uh, have scope for pre-processing. Essentially, uh, all the tasks to be performed here are uh, not dependent on the input at all. You know, uh, finding the Fibonacci numbers from one to 10,000, let's say, or uh, trying to um, save all the numbers between one to 10,000 in their binary format. So the pre-processing unit is something that uh, essentially can go on while the input is being read into the program. The input reader, of course, just reads in the input and uh, saves that so that 
once the preprocessing unit and the input reader both are done, uh, we can return to the main class and say that solve for every input the result and give it back. So it's important to notice that these two classes, the preprocessing unit and the input reader are independent, but the solver is dependent on both of them to complete and then only then can we actually solve the problem. So what does task manager here do? Its job is just to take tasks, either add, accept task, and then complete them. Once it has completed it, it will remove the task from the queue it has. Internally, this task manager is like a data structure. It takes in tasks, and when calling complete on it, it starts them, waits for them to complete, and removes them from the queue. So let's talk about this utility class of task manager. Um, I'll be sharing the link for this code in the status description below. So in case there's something that you don't completely understand or want to go through more thoroughly, uh, it's, that's fine. Uh, but I'll be discussing uh, the methods right now. Anyway, so that shouldn't be necessary. Right, so internally the task manager is a data structure of tasks. What it does is it, it accepts tasks, uh, adds it to this queue. It starts them, calls the start method on a thread. Uh, this is like asking the thread to uh, uh, just uh, begin execution. Wait for all to complete. Uh, waits for each thread to complete. Uh, quite, quite, you know, uh, understandable. You could go through these methods of join, start, uh, and read up uh, the documentation but uh, in case you want to use these methods as black boxes black box methods and then it's fine uh, removing all the tasks just uh, takes all the current tasks in this queue and throws them in the dustbin it's just assigning it to a new array list complete all tasks is the method which is public so actually internally uh, hopefully you won't be ever using these methods uh, but you can, you can, you can configure it a little bit according to your uh, your needs. But uh, complete all tasks is what we want to to call from the main function. It's essentially starting all the tasks, waiting for them to complete, and removing them once they're done. The final method in this is a little complicated. Too many of its functionalities seem like simply assigning tasks in a cyclic fashion. Uh, by cyclic, I mean that uh, the first task goes to the first thread, the second task goes to the second thread, and so on till, let's say the number of threads were four, and uh, you come to the fifth task, that would be assigned to the first thread again. So it's it's basically taking a remainder uh, of, of the task number by uh, number of threads that you are uh, going to allow it to use. So now that we have seen a little bit about task manager, let's see how we are going to get all this to work together. We create the task manager object. We ask it to accept a task of finding all prime numbers, which will be using this sieve algorithm. Also we ask it to accept a task of uh, taking in all the input. So each input number uh, at index i will be uh, read in. After these two tasks have been added to the queue, we <laughs> ask the task manager to complete uh, these two tasks. As we know, it starts, waits, and then removes from the queue. Once this is done, we are now ready to uh, look at the algorithm, look at the solving part of the algorithm. We declare a array of boolean called results. This is where we'll be storing each result. Uh, and then we use this uh, scheduling of cyclic assignment in this task manager. Essentially what's happening is we are providing the number of test cases 
the number of threads is equal to the number of processors we have available we will be discussing why this is the case uh, the input numbers put numbers would be a better name yeah and uh, solve object and finally where does this method store the results then we ask the task manager to complete this particular task this is the only task uh, in the queue right now and once that is done we can take each result map it to a yes or a no and then join it with new line character after every result so this is a little bit of java 8 syntax uh, i'll be going through this very quickly uh, this array is converted to a stream each element in the stream is mapped according to its true or false value to a yes or a no and then collected into uh, a, a big string a big string of uh, results along with new line characters so this is just an output format you could you know if you want csv then you could probably use this or uh, according to your demands you could be changing this to uh, any any way that you want to collect the results so why did we assign one thread to each processor the reason being that uh, if you assign more than one thread uh, the time they require to communicate with each other is going to eat into your efficiency um, uh, unless you have of course very network intensive or io intensive operations to be done so essentially uh, you never want to be assigning more than uh, the number of processors as your number of threads you could i, I think the limit is 3 per processor usually but uh, I, i would suggest against it and it's it's something like trying to uh, asking nine women to produce a baby in one month it's uh, <laughs> it's not going to happen and might actually take longer i can't think of any reason for that but anyway uh so now that we have seen how the main method can be used to uh, handle the task manager and uh, solve the algorithm i i hope that you know this multi threading uh lecture will be of use to you especially when Uh, your algorithm is off by a factor of log n mostly that's that's the time when we uh, can afford to write down the multi threading algorithms because uh, log n is usually a small factor of around 20 and uh, because uh, most competitions keep a safety net of around 5 times the uh, the complexity required for example you know if n is Uh, 10 is to power 6 most competitions keep the time limit of 1 second and if if your algorithm is n log n of course in this case it will work let's let's make it a little higher uh, let's make it 10 is to power 7 in that case uh, the, the time that you need is 10 is to power 7 into 23 for n log n uh, complexity what the yeah so for a n log n complexity algorithm so uh, this is around 2.3 into 10 is to power 8 for a one second time limit this is not going to work but uh, using multi threading you can uh, speed up your um uh, efficiency by a by a factor of around 2 or 2.5 so it might just make it through also other algorithms where uh, n log n is required you could uh, you could use a n log n square algorithm so it would probably just make the mark but um as as i said earlier you know maybe the best thing to do is first try and improve, improve your algorithm and if you just can't uh try all the other optimization methods that we have discussed uh to to try and get the time limit to to be less than what your algorithm requires so that's it for multi threading i uh, really hope you like this lecture and 
uh, will find it useful. Um, as I said, the utility class and other, the, the whole code will be uh, shared in the status description below. So in case you feel like playing around with it, go ahead, have fun. See ya.